Hi everybody, welcome back to Charming Data. Today we're going to look into a new YouTube series that I'm going to call Learn From Others. In this YouTube series, I'm going to dissect the different dashboard apps written in, in Python dash Plotly um, so we can best learn from them. So you can learn with Python and Dash how to create these kind of beautiful dashboard apps. Specifically in this dashboard app that Sai Prakash um, submitted to me, um, we're going to learn how uh, to use a button, how to click on a button and make uh, the click um, uh, create an interactive um, uh, um, Dash Boost Shop cards. And these cards have their own button, uh, which will bring up different uh, Dash um, tabs. And these tabs will have text and a modal and also graphs into it. So. You're also going to learn how to do layout of rows and columns, so you can learn how to lay out your own app. You're going to see this cool image and how every three seconds it moves into a different image. So we're going to learn a lot, a lot of things today, but mainly using Dash Bootstrap to create these cool, these cool apps. Thank you, Sai, for um, submitting this app to, to my uh, uh, YouTube for me to talk about it, and uh, also mainly for submitting it to Viz for Social Good, which is a nonprofit organization that encourages others to create data visualizations for, um, for, uh, the, the, to help communities around the world. In this case, we're helping communities in, West, in Western Africa and in Central Africa through the uh, Foundation Floral Luxembourg. Okay, so um, to get started, what you want to do is go into the GitHub and make sure you don't need all of this. All of this, some of this is for deployment on the web, but you really just need app.py, download the social good Excel sheet, and inside you download the assets folder, and inside there, download the, the, the images so you can have these images right here. Those are the only things that you need um, to actually run this app. Once you download everything, make sure that this and this are in the same folder. And once you run it, this will appear on your browser. Um, if it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, we can. The idea is that I'm going to go over the code right now to help you understand how to use Bootstrap to create these um, this cool dashboard. Um, one remark, one note before before we jump into it. Um, this is um, a part of. Uh, my whole GitHub repository that I am um, that I'm created over the last year and a half, and this is completely free for you. So feel free to go into it. And there's a bunch. All of this is um, hundreds of files of code on on Dash Plotly that you can use for yourself, and you can learn how to create your own dashboard apps. Um, I would be grateful if you could um, if you could support me with this uh, link above, because um, uh, thanks to people like you that support me, that I'm able to create this code and these tutorials for you. Okay, so let's jump right into it, um, and we'll see first how he's creating, how Sai is creating this first um, uh, page on the layout. What he's doing here, let's go to the code. Code is right here. Jump to a line uh, 1,782. In, don't worry that there's a lot of lines of code. We're not going to go over everything, but uh, trust me, by the end of this um, tutorial, you're going to know Dash Bootstrap a lot better. You're going to know how to use layout a lot better. And you're going to know how to uh, use the callback to connect the button um, to, to different things. So if you click on a button, you can create cards and many other things. So you're going to learn a lot today, but let's take it slowly. The first thing we want to do is the app layout. So this inside the app layout is where everything is right here is where the main page goes, right? Every all this right here is inside the app layout. And what we see here is first we have a div and inside the div we have the first row, right? Inside this first row, we have a column component that's 12 um, uh, columns or units wide and it's just housing the um, the first uh, uh, title sentence, Fondation Flora Luxembourg. Now, what's cool about uh, what Sai is doing here, Sai Prakash is actually using bootstrap classes, which is just a string, uh, and assigning them to the class name parameter. Every dash um, component, uh, core component or HTML component, HTML, DCC, has the class name parameter that is used to style that certain, that certain component. 
attachment here, Cyberkash is using um, this dash uh, bootstrap. And it it's, seems like complicated, but it's not. All you have to do is go to, let's look up text primary. What does that even mean? So I'm going to copy this, and then you go to your bootstrap um, cheat sheet that I'm going to give you under the video. And all you have to do in the cheat sheet is go control F so you can start looking for what, what he wrote, text primary, enter, and you'll see text primary here. You'll click on it and you see that it's really just text that it's in, in blue, right? So this is what he's doing here when he says text primary. He's just saying make this text blue. Um, for on the on the uh, app, it's it's in um, orange, but it's probably just conflicting with a a, a, a main parent CSS. Um, if you just had text primary, this would be the color blue. And then MB4, if you um, look at MB4, let's go to MB. MB is up here. MB1, there's MB1, MB2, MB4. This you can't really see it here, but it just means marginal space on the bottom. So there's just more space on the bottom. So and before when he puts this here, it just means that for this sentence, this um, title, make sure there's four units of space. I think it's four pixels between this and the image. Change that. You can try to change that to MB1, and you would see how this becomes a lot smaller. This space, the empty space between the title and the image. Okay, and then he goes to he puts an HTML div under that <coughs> image. And inside the div, he puts another div, and he says, here's where the images are going to go. There's nothing in here, but we're going to put images in here using the dash interval. So this interval is a dash component that activates every three seconds. Every three seconds, it counts. And interval one and interval two. And what he's doing, we're going to combine these two in a callback to move the images along. So there's different images. So remember, uh, the interval... ID and the image ID. All right, image ID is part of the div. Let's go down here a little bit and you'll see here's where he does it. He takes the callback and he says in the callback decorator, the input will be the n intervals, right? So this will be, this is exactly like this. These are the same things, right? And this will be zero the first time and then one after three seconds and then two after three seconds and then three because every three seconds the interval is activated. So this will be um, zero, one, two, three. He's creating an image here and then he's returning the image into the children of the image ID, which is uh, image ID right here. Children of this div is is an empty div, right? So he's returning something into this section of the page, right? And what is he returning? He's saying, if n equals none or n um, uh, modulo uh, five, uh, remainder of five equals one, which is the same thing as saying n equals five or n equals two and n equals three, then the, uh, uh, create an object called IMG, which will actually pull an image, an HTML image, from his assets folder. So this works. See this 47 blah 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 JPG. This works because in his code, let's go to learn from others right here. In his um, uh, code, he has an assets folder, and in the assets folder, he has these JPGs. So that's why when he says app.getAssetURL, he can uh, uh, put here the name of the JPG, and it's pulled into an HTML uh, image component, and it's in, saved as an image object, and then he's just spinning out the object into the children of this div right here, right? And the children of this div goes right under the title. Right? So that's why every three seconds you see a different image here. It's a really cool way of doing it. Congratulations, Sai. Okay, and then under the image there's a line break. There's just a break here, right? And then after the break there's a, a sentence, select a year to track the uh, project achievements. Uh, where is a sentence here? Select a year to track the object achievements. Also, he's using the same kind of bootstrap classes to style this, this sentence. So it's, it looks exactly the same as this sentence, the same color. And then he's creating four different column components. Um, one is uh, 0 0.1 width, um, the other one is 1, the other one is 0 0.1, and the other one is 1. There's buttons here in between. So you see there is a space here, then there's a button, another 0 0.1, and then uh, there's the, the next button here. Okay, and under the buttons we have an empty div. Right? There's nothing in here. ID display cards. There's nothing in the children of this div. That's why there's right here under the buttons, there's nothing. There's an empty div. However, once you click on the button, 
a div appears. The div is populated with all these dash bootstrap cards and buttons and modals and tabs. So how does he do that? How does he make the page when you click, when the user clicks on it, it actually populates something inside the div. He does that like he did with images through a callback. So you'll see it here. He takes the end clicks, which is the parameter of, of the button, of the 2018 button. Where is the 2018? Right here, right? This ID is 2018. This ID belongs to the button. He takes the end clicks of this button, which the beginning is none or zero. And he takes the end clicks of the 2019 button and he says, um, if <clears throat> end clicks equals zero of the, of the first button, or and the second button, then return an empty space, an empty string. Return nothing, in other words, an empty string into remember whatever you're returning, you're returning into the output. So return this into the children of um, the display cards um, component ID. What is that? This is this to so the children of this div. So if the buttons are not clicked, return an empty space, return nothing, right? But if the buttons are clicked, he has to figure out, this you can just copy paste, you don't have to understand what it means, you're just getting inside the data of the button, and then you just got to figure out what is the x, the x equals uh, the ID of the first button, or is it the ID of the second button, which button was clicked. So if uh, x, the, uh, the 2018 button was clicked, I'm going to return this object into that div. And if 2019 was clicked, I'm going to return this object, okay? So what is this object? I, well, I didn't know when I first looked at it, so what I did is I copied Control-C and Control-F to open the search, and then I Control-V uh, to search for it, and then I see here in line 1713, graph card um, 2018. So this is what is populated under the button 2018 that is clicked, all of this. All right, so let's, let's dissect this a little bit more. First, we have 2018 results, right? This is, you can see right here. And underneath, you have three rows, two, three, with three column components in each row, right? And that makes sense because there's three rows, one, two, three, and three column components, okay? And each column component, he's putting a, a dash bootstrap card. This is a dash bootstrap card, like what you see right here, all right? And inside the dash bootstrap card, he's actually putting the, the content, which is this or this. Right now it's an object, but again, we're gonna to have to do the same thing. We're gonna copy paste. We're gonna do Burkina Faso because it's um, smaller than Benin. Copy this. I'm actually gonna copy card content 2018, like this. I'm gonna paste it in the find, and then I'm gonna go search for it. Let's go down, let's go up, 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 up up right here so it's a bit complex here is using he's just he's just using a for loop to go over all the countries uh in the data in 2018 which are nine different countries and then he's saying um um extend this to card content 2018 underscore benin for the first country and burkina faso for the second country and then he's creating the card here so this is just a for loop so he doesn't have to repeat this nine different times right so if we're going to say um, Burkina Faso, the card header is going to be the I, which is I right here, which is Burkina Faso. So you'll see Burkina Faso here. And then he's creating the card content. And you'll see here it has project count. And then it, it connects to a certain string from an object above somewhere in the code. You see project count two because they have two projects. And then he's saying the categories in this year, uh, right here, categories in this year. And then he adds those project categories from a list that he determined um, somewhere above in the code. Well, you could just put text there if you want, but he made this uh, a bit more auto automated. And then he's uh, under this text, he's putting the, this, this section, the click for insight, right? And this section is a modal selection 2018. This is actually a, a function. So if you click on it, you'll see modal selection 2018 for Burkina Faso, because this is the, the second I. This is the second I for Burkina Faso. If you click on it, it'll say uh, row 1621. So let's go to 1621. Again, you don't have to make this that complicated. You can definitely put everything, write everything out instead of putting in functions. But he's just um, doing this, so it's just a lot quicker for him and a lot shorter, so he doesn't have to write everything 10,000 times. So let's go to 1621. 
um, section 21. And this section here, you'll see he's defining uh, model selection, and he's saying um, this is the list of all the countries, and if the country equals one, which is this one, the second country, then return model Burkina Faso 2018. So again, we'll copy paste this, we'll go back, see where is that model Burkina Faso 2018, back, map, up, up, here it is. So there we go. We found we found the, the meat, we found all of this, all these tabs and modals right here uh, for Burkina Faso. All this is actually this right here, the click for insight, right? So if I click on this, it will this is the button click for insight, which you see right here at the very top, click for insight right here. And if I click on this button, it will open up this modal right here that has different um, tabs for each project. And if you click on the tabs, then it will open up more modals and a graph. Okay, so let's see how he does this because this is uh, something that's exciting. He does this through the callback. Pay attention to this. This modal here, with all the information, it ends here, um, is open is the parameter to tell the app user if, um, or to tell the app if the modal is open or closed. So is open false? means that the modal at the beginning, at the very start of the app, um, the modal is closed. So you see if I, um, there is no modal here, there's nothing open. Only if I click on it, this is going to open up the modal. So how does he do that? He does that through the callback. So let's go to the callback. Okay, if I was the 18. Okay, so here's a callback, line 1945. And he's saying, Take the state, the current state of modal Burkina Faso 2018. This is the ID of the modal, right? Which is false. We saw that is open equals false. And take also, this is false, and take also the N1. N1 is the clicks here. This is the first input. This is the clicks of the button. So obviously the button at the very beginning is not clicked on, so there is no if N1. This is else. So if the button is not clicked on, then return is open. And we know that is open, the state as if open is false. So that means if there's no click button, then the modal is false. However, if N1 is clicked on, one time, two times, three times, it doesn't matter, whenever a button is clicked on, I'm going to return the opposite of false. So not false. So it's going to be open. So that's why this goes, this goes into right here, and this becomes true, not false is true, so this becomes true for modal Burkina Faso 2018 ID, let's go back, modal Burkina Faso 2018 ID, the parameter of is open becomes true, so that's why when you click on it, the modal appears, All right? And the modal appears with two different tabs, each representing a different project, so if you go here, you'll see this is a whole modal, it has one tab, and it has the second tab, right, inside the parents DCC tabs dash component. And this first tab has, <coughs> this is the, the, the label, this is a project name, this is from a list that he created above in the code of the two projects, the first one, zero, and the second project. So that's why you see the first name here and the second name here. And if you click on the first tab, then you'll see all this, right? Local partner, category, region. So if you click on the first tab right here, you'll see uh, Das Bootstrap modal body, the body of the modal, you'll see local partner, category, region, and then he's just attaching some strings that he created, um, list that he created above, right, to populate this data in here. And then here, after the results, after the results part, he's, uh, he's opening a div and he's creating a graph inside this div. Now this graph is empty. This has an empty dictionary, but he's actually um, populating this graph through a callback. Um, and you'll see that here. We're going to 19, copy, paste. See the callback here? He's saying whenever the children of the tab is clicked on, whenever there's a children of the tab, um, create a, a figure here, uh, uh, create a table from the figure factory, and then uh, create that, this, this figure table, and then spit it out inside the figure parameter of Burkina Faso 1 2018. Burkina Faso 1 2018 is the ID of the dash bootstrap card. So this figure is going to go, instead of the dictionary, this will be a figure inside of here. So that is how he's creating this dash um, figure factory um, uh, table that has titles to it and it has some numbers that he's pulling from, from his code. Perfect. 
So um, this is how he creates his whole uh, models, how he opens this up, and how if you click on it, it closes up. And then he just repeats it for, if you know, if you understand how to do Bur Burkina Faso, he repeats the same thing eight different times for eight different countries. And then he repeats the same thing for 2019 um, for the other, uh, for the same nine countries, but for a different year. So once you understand one piece of code, you don't have to understand 2,000 lines of code. You can understand about 150 lines of code. Then you can understand the rest. So take it bits and pieces at a time. Don't feel overwhelmed. Um, um, and, and try to follow um, the the, the, the uh, you know the a way I did it, so you can um, dissect it and learn how he's doing different things. If you have any questions, please uh, under the video ask them. You can go to um, Sai Prakash's um, uh, repository. I'm going to add it in the in the link below the video. You can ask Sai Prakash how he did things because you can really learn a lot from this video. Sorry, from this um, from this uh, dashboard. Um, so I hope you learned a lot. Um, uh, always remember, uh, we're better together. So help each other up, help each other out. Um, never give up and keep practicing. I will see you next time. If you want to uh, send me any dashboard, if you want me to talk about your dashboards, feel free to do so. Whenever I have the time, I will try it. Good luck and I'll see you soon.